Welcome to the Harnessing Happiness podcast. Upbeat vibes generated and transferred to you. Now here's your host, Sarah J. Naylor. Hello and welcome to Harnessing Happiness with myself, Sarah J. Naylor. Thank you so much for dropping on by and taking time out to listen to my podcast. Today, I am delighted to introduce the rather fabulous Emma Clayton to you all. And I'm going to hand over to Emma because I would like her to introduce herself in the best possible taste. So off you go, Emma, <laughs> take centre stage. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, I was channeling my, channeling my inner... Um, oh, Kenny Everett. Kenny Everett. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure some <laughs> listeners will probably think we're a bit nuts now. Who's Emma? <laughs> so I think at this point, go YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Anyway, sorry, over to you, Emma. Amazing. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for a lovely introduction. Yeah, so hello, everybody. My name is Emma Clayton, as Sarah said, and I am a business strategist, and I'm also a gender pay gap speaker. So what does that mean? Um, basically, I really try and support women, empower them to step into their own power, by charging more, understanding sort of their value in the market and positioning them so that we can start to really step up and match our male counterparts and, um, you know, lead women into wealth and lead them into choice and freedom because ultimately that's that's what money does, really. So, yeah, that's what I do. And I use business strategies, empowerment. Um, so, yeah, I'm really delighted to be here. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah, you're welcome. It's fabulous to have you on and a great subject to discuss, of course, as well. And, you know, the the whole subject of money, it's a bit of a dirty word, isn't it? It's kind of people feel very sort of like, oh, we don't want to talk about money. But actually, it's just an energy exchange. It's what we have to do to charge for our services in order to buy other services. And there's a big sense of value of how you value yourself attached to how you then charge and people again feel uncomfortable about that and it's all steeped historically no doubt I mean you could probably tell us a lot more about that because you've been focusing in on it Uh, but it's really interesting and I'm fascinated to hear more because of my work within recruitment you know a lot of my clients say that there is parity of pay because the job people go in at the same level on the same salary and that's what it is but lots of different things impact don't they over the years when people go off into women go off into maternity leave and they can be out of the work marketplace so their, their counterparts are getting the promotion opportunities and they're missing out there's there's lots of contribute it's massive topic obviously but massive. yes do, do, do go into it into more detail please do oh enlighten us further well there's just there's so much that you could talk about i mean i'm going to be running a full day symposium on this actually later in may because i do think it needs breaking down and it's not just as easy as saying you know put your prices up because then it's like well that's all well and good I can easily do that all I need to do is change a number on a website page or on whatever you know my prices are it's it's all of the psychological pieces attached to it it's the patriarchal systems there was research done by the Rose Report by IPSA um, over the last sort of three years and women are leaving employment in droves because Mm -hmm. employment which is what we were all told you know we'd go through school and you know go and get a good job and you get a good job and then what we're finding is that as women are having children the the employment and I know it's getting better and I know you know COVID has probably done us quite you know a lot of good in terms of flexible working and remote working but actually there's still this um lack of leniency and forgiveness around the burden that women have got because they are generally the caregivers in the home children elderly parents they're the ones that especially in covid you know had to do the homeschooling whilst they were Mm -hmm. still doing jobs whilst they were still running a business and I, i mean i think that there is progression but what they're saying is just for the um overall gender pay gap it's going to take 257 years to close it if we just do what we are doing now oh yes yeah and then Yeah, I mean, it's just, that's ridiculous. That's going to be our great, great, great grandkids. And I I have a daughter who's 13 and I want to speed that up. I want to Mm. leave a really positive legacy for her. When you get into self-employment, which is where a lot of women are now heading, a lot of women, uh, you know, they're having children incredibly talented. The brain drain is really going. I know you're seeing this with the lack of candidates you've got in the Mm. market at the moment. Oh, definitely, definitely. The brain drain is 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 very apparent and women are starting up their own businesses. 
about 90% of a female founded business will only be ever one or two people. So it will never grow. There's lack of funding. There's the inability internally to feel that you can take on more because of all the other things that you've got Mm -hmm. going on. And you're wading through treacle just to keep your head above water. So when somebody says to you, you know, grow your business, suddenly we kind of go, oh my God, that means more work. (laughs) And we go, oh, I don't want that, I don't want that. So we we stay small. What I'm trying to sort of almost do is start and lift it the other way and say, well, look, hang on a second. What would you love to be able to earn to have the flexibility and freedom that you left your corporate job for that you've got in terms of time, but you haven't got it financially? Because when you get up to retirement age, you haven't built the nest egg and you are going to be perpetually on this cycle. So we look at that, we break it down. And I think, you know, it is all about knowing how to run the business smartly because we're not Mm -hmm. taught this. It's the systems and the environment and the society we're in that is more forgiving. And I think it's just, you know, togetherness of women, you know, empowering each other and cheerleading and saying, well, of course you should charge that. Why would you not? And surrounding ourselves with the people that will push us forward and not around the people that are telling us we can't do it. We've already got that voice in our head. (laughs) Yeah, but you're absolutely spot on. I mean, it is about the people you surround yourselves with and it is about the people that you aspire to be or who you want to be around or what you want to achieve. And, you know, it's not always about, it's not necessarily about greed and avarice, but I think women are more unlikely to want to sort of give money away than they want to necessarily keep. But, you know, I I see it actually in a lot of men as well. And I wonder whether, yes, obviously there is that big gender pay gap, but I'm wondering whether there's it's it's more of an, an energetic thing it's that how we've been brought up what we've our um, our expectation is around money our experiences with money the stories we've been told about money that very much impact us and of course it does impact women more so because as you said rightly you know we're the ones that usually end up so with a family, I have to say, I went back to, went back to work when my son was four months old. I wasn't Same. really, really the, um, yeah, the most maternal. I, I wouldn't have been, I couldn't have been. It just, yeah. Anyway, I've encouraged my son to be an entrepreneur as well. So that's good news. And he's very, very entrepreneurial. But, you know, it is about the stories we tell ourselves, like you said, but then in work, being around people that are going to support us yeah. and believe in us and you know, encourage us. And that's, that's what's so important in life. Generally, it's people who want the best for us and people that pull us back down are the people who don't want to see the success or they've, they fear because they're basing that on their own experience of the world. And that's transference, they're transferring that fear, because that they've not been able to do it. So they don't think you'll be able to do it. And they're going to hold you back. Yeah, because they're feeling that that's making you safe. Or as I say, it's more of a reflection. They don't want to see you progress because it means that they need to then do something about things themselves. But it's it's about, you know, ourselves, isn't it? It's about taking that time and deciding what we actually want to do and what we actually want to achieve. Because I think it's also recognising our fears. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of different fears that sit behind this, you know, and whatever this is, it's that sort of bravery, it's that putting yourself out there you know almost sort of saying I'm worth this much where we fear the rejection we fear the shame if we've left a corporate job we fear our ex-colleagues looking at us saying who does she think she is you know we'll say oh well I just earned what I did in my job and then we forget that we've got all these other taxes and health care and pensions to contribute to and all these different things but I do I do think that it starts within us and as a as a gender, women tend to be much more serving to others. And that's a tribal, you know, the men would go mm-hmm. out and they'd hunt and gather and, you know, they'd go out and bring the food back where women would build the communities. And you'll often hear women will do everything for everyone else and nothing for themselves. So yeah. suddenly, you know, doing this for ourselves. So what I'm trying to sort of almost get people to think differently is, well, hang on, we've got a responsibility here, not just to ourselves and our business and our own income, but actually to our gender. Mm-hmm. And actually, more importantly, to the girls behind us, that's that's so if you can't do it for yourself, please do it for the girls behind us. And and a lot of women will go, that makes sense. I'll do it for them. <laughs> yes, yes. I won't yes. do it for me, but I will do it for them. So I think it is almost and, I've, and I, I'm, my strap line 
is change your prices, change the world? Because I do think that this is where it sits. Those those of us that are in business, definitely. And actually, it's, it's educating yourself as well. I mean, we aren't our behaviour. We can change our behaviour at any time that we, we choose to. And we want to take that responsibility. But that education and the financial side of things, I mean, I, I have to say, you know, I've read, I've got lots of books on money myself. And one thing, <laughs> I get to that point and there's, there's an exercise that get, involves getting an Excel spreadsheet out. And I go, oh, no, I don't really know how to use Excel. However... As we are moving into 2022, and I have been keeping a spreadsheet from a podcast, <laughs> I'm a little bit more familiar with the green logo of Excel, I'm going to really sort of embrace my fears in that respect. It's not so much I've got a fear of money because I have, you know, I've worked with my pension, I've got that on a sort of a sip on it, and I've invested it and I've had, you know, a much better return than I would have done had it been sat where it was. You know, I've got rental properties, I've got, you know, I've got different things going on and it's about creating those different revenue streams. And it is encouraging other women to get savvy on the financial front and understand we have to take responsibility for ourselves. And, and that is true across the board. Everybody, the responsibility for your life sits with you it starts and, with you and ends absolutely with you. it does it starts and finishes with you and you know wherever you are whatever you're doing everything can be changed with setting the right intentions yeah. so right now it's about just wherever you are right now what is it you want to achieve and you know everything is everything is possible however much it might seem impossible and it's okay to dream it's okay to dream big it's okay to have big goals that's what keeps us striving and actually interesting in that it keeps us thriving mm -hmm. because that sense of achievement achieve celebrate you feel good you want to do more and that's how you then start to thrive is by having those goals and you know saying I can do this and then being able to do it you know there's no greater thing when someone says you can't do that going just watch me <laughs> yeah oh, exactly look oh, at me nothing, <laughs> there's nothing like that red rag to the bull with me you can't do that what do you mean I can't do I that my <laughs> life doing that so I had two older brothers and they'd be going you can't do that I go who said so? Let me so, go and do that, you know. I have never in all of my life sort of really sort of taken any notice. I've just done what I've set myself out to want to do. I've never really sort of looked at other people going, well, um, or, you know, men or women. You know, I've, I've just always just, if I felt it, I've gone with it. I feel I, I work very much from an instinctive, intuitive perspective. If it yeah. feels right, I can just go, right, I'm doing it. It's a bit like when yeah. I trained to be a coach back in 2011, 2012. It was just like suddenly something came to me. I thought, right, that's what I'm going to do. I found somewhere to train. <laughs> there was and no you procrastination. Got, um, a really strong internal validation system where actually you don't need anybody else's validation because no. <laughs> it's right for you. And you know that this is right for you and it feels good. So you go do it. And I'm similar to you. Yeah. What we see with a lot of women, because it goes, again, it goes back to those tribal days. It goes back to needing to belong, is we're always looking for that external validation. We're always looking for someone to say, that's okay, you can do it. We're always seeking permission. Mm -hmm. I guess that's one thing that I would just love women to do is go, does it feel good for me? I'm going to do it. No, Not absolutely. 10,000 people's opinion before you make a decision. And then often the opportunity is gone by the time. You <laughs> exactly. You've absolutely hit them. Absolutely hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. It is about listening to your gut. It's listening to your instinct. It's make does it feel right? And unfortunately in today's world, this sort of this busyness, this is sort of constant stream of seeing what other people are doing. And that is just one snapshot. And it might only be reflective for that sort of second that it pops up onto your screen. But even, you know, even for myself, you know, I do get impacted by it. And you have to take yourself away from it going, no enough you know let me feel what I feel what I want to do how I want to achieve it let me get the learning and it's about taking the learning and then taking the bits out that are good for you that resonate with you and it's about listening and tuning into that rather than think oh I've got to be like that person to be successful and I yeah. know because I went self-employed in 2009 at the height of the recession the last well one of the recession in recruitment and, um, and that was a challenging time as itself but I worked on behalf of other agencies at the time when I was still you know focused very much on recruitment and then when I was setting up my limited company I was still sort of comp I worked in this sort of I don't know why I did it I compared myself to other people I'm going well I need to do it like she's doing it. And in the end, I, this is enough. I've had enough of this. And I actually went to see, um, I went to have some EFT, emotional freedom technique, which is sort of tapping with oh, the lady the tapping, that I, yeah. mm, which is amazing. Because I did it with um, a lady that I um, qualified as a Reiki practitioner with. I don't know what it was, what blockages, but there are energy blocks that we can get in with our system that we might not even know what they are. They might be so deep rooted. 
pretty much the following day I went right that's it then so I set up my limited company um, set the intention of turning over 100,000 in the first year Amazing. and so we're talking money and um, that's what I did well in my Amazing. first year of trading so it, that's what I did just set it up as a VAT registered limited company from day one and, you know and it was a good job that I did because the clients that I work with are global clients and they wouldn't have been able to work with me had I not done that yeah. but you know it, it's recognizing where you've got blocks and acting upon it and taking act well taking action you know and that's what you've been alluding to society has this vision of what we should and shouldn't do so i was in corporate i was in you know Mm -hmm. senior positions launching and managing you know million pound brands traveling the world but actually i was a single mom at the same time and i really hated being away from uh, molly my daughter you know from the age of about five to eight i just felt like i'd missed out on some of her years where i was traveling the world and you know i've got more pictures of us facetiming than actually together so oh. I left and, and it all sort of ended very abruptly and there were lots of different reasons for it. And every single person said to me, you are making a big mistake. You're a single mom. you've got mortgages, you've got debts. You, you cannot do that. You are being irresponsible and, you know, you, you, you're, you know this is not good for you as a single mom with your daughter, you know. And I just went, no, I'm sorry, because actually what's really important to me is that I'm there for her and that I'm mm-hmm. a role model. I don't want to be a role model where I'm an absent parent, especially when I'm the only parent. I just went and just did it and I and eventually came back after six months and said, now look, I've got this really successful business and it's growing, What you know, and I'm earning more than I ever did. And actually what I'm doing is being this role model. So society have got this box that they want to put you in, especially as a mother. You know, like you, I Molly was premature. Her dad left when she was born. I had no choice but to go back to work. And I lived with so much guilt and lots of people sort of tutting. And I didn't have a choice. I got on with it. But that's another thing I think we need to change is that you can work and you can still love your kids, even if you are not surgically attached to them. You know, (laughs) exactly. Okay, because you're role modelling behavior for your kids to see that it's okay to go and do that so I just think there's all these judgments that we give women we need to just give them a break because yeah. that, that's what's creating all these poor not poor decisions but decisions coming from a place of lack rather than abundance and positivity and can do and actually it's about distancing yourself from people that think that way because everything as I say everything's possible and you've alluded to being a single parent and that's you know I'd left my ex-husband yeah. when my son was six and that was in 2005 and it was 2009 so I was a single I was a single parent 2009 um with a mortgage like you said and just went self-employed out of the recession because actually I'd, I'd explored all the other options <laughs> and there weren't any and I just had to leave where I was for lots of different reasons and I thought I just need to do it and I shall make it work and as it was pointed out to me at the time it was, well you'll end up earning more money you wouldn't have been employed in doing what you're doing if you weren't bringing the money in. and it was like okay yeah fair cop and it created a life for myself and you know, Good job, really. The amount of times the school used to call me up. <laughs> okay, what's he done now? Oh, God. <laughs> He's just very energetic and very passionate himself. Look, they all liked him, but, you know, some of the things, oh, my God, really? Fred. <laughs> it's the age. <laughs> well, all age, right from primary school, he really shouldn't be running around with his pulling his pants down or then getting... <laughs> <laughs> doctor dot drawing sent home to me he'd obviously plotted out in maths of a rabbit and then he decided to add um, some male anatomy to it as well oh he's gonna love you for sharing this oh it's already framed he's got it he'll love it mm. <laughs> but he's doing really well and it's great because his father's um, self-employed he couldn't work for anybody else to be fair but fred's got his own you know he works for his dad they build fancy garden rooms he's a plaster and he's also got his skate clothing brand so you know he's really and it, he's driven i've always supported him to follow his passions to follow his flow because that's what I think is really, really important, aligning really important. your career and your passions and your interest with what you do. Yeah. Because then it's not work, you're doing stuff that you really enjoy. And it's about valuing, as you say, going back to the valuing yourself and yeah, just just being a role model for other people as a, as a mother being a role model. And, you know, I was able to do all the things f- and be there for him, although perhaps a little bit too often because the phone rings now on a regular basis, mum. <laughs> But, you know, it's great, you know, what you've done. And, you know, and it, it's if we can encourage more women, more yeah. people to, totally. to believe in themselves and to actually value themselves. And you say put them the right prices and the right charges and invest. Because it isn't just about earning your income from that one job. It's that multiple income streams. It's passive income streams. It's what you can create and how you can do it. But doing it with what feels right to you instinctively without the pressure of the Instagram world of going, oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. And yeah, and I think also, you know, we should stop doing this, especially for those of us that have been in corporate and then we leave and we go on these daily and hourly rates. 
I worked with a client and I'm sure she won't mind me telling this story, but, you know, she was charging per hour and then she was very vocal on her website, look, this only takes me an hour. And I said, well, how long does it take someone else that doesn't have your experience? And she went, oh, it's probably like three, four hours. And I said, well, then they're getting paid more. You are Mm -hmm. selling yourself short because you are charging by the hour and then only getting paid, you know, you're, you're doing a disservice because you can do things quicker because you're smarter and you've got the experience. So you're shooting yourself in the foot. You need to do this on results. And when, you know, when you can say this cost X and this is the result, people can buy that and understand it much greater and you can actually charge more. So here's another example. Somebody was looking for a videographer that I spoke to last week and they said, oh, you know, God, they were like £25 an hour. And I said, and did you sign up with them straight away? And she went, no, I didn't. And I said, and why did you not? And she went, well, I didn't think they were very good. And I said, well, why didn't you think they were very good? And she went, because they were only £25 an hour. So actually what we're doing is making ourselves look like we're not very good because we're underpricing. So we're mm-hmm. then telling the world we're not very good so nobody wants us and when you put your prices up actually it's interesting how many more people want to work with you because then you become coveted it's interesting as well so much psychology around it oh gosh i've got i mean like literally i could spend all day talking about it yeah exactly well we you know we we've both uh know lisa johnson and she's she's the passive income queen (laughs) um but i remember her saying on um something that was on recently you know you there's 10% of the audience will buy. So who do you want to sell to? <laughs> and she's so right. I mean, she has got such an amazing business model. You know, she mm. she is, and she deserves it. You know, she really deserves it. But I think also there are 10% that will buy, but there's also 45% underneath that that will buy in the next 12 months. So yeah. just because somebody isn't buying from you right now does not mean they're not ever going to buy from you. You know, 50% of people watching in the next 12 months will probably buy from you if you can establish that relationship. So definitely, mm-hmm. definitely, you know, don't give up just because you've put something out once or you've put your prices up once. There are so many reasons why people are mm-hmm. not buying and it's probably not you. Well, I was going to say it's about, about nurturing your audience as well, isn't it? If you are if you are an entrepreneur, if you are self-employed, you are doing your own and thing. And that's where Lisa does, you know, she's incredible at that. She's got such an incredible army of, you know, oh, loyal fans. Um, yeah, she is. She's in, incredible. Well, I think the beauty with Lisa is that she's very transparent she's got integrity she's got honesty she sort of says it how it is and she's very structured in her approach in the way she sort of teaches and trains and she actually gives an awful lot I mean the value for money even just as a participant I think is you know of, yeah. of, a, of a group-based program and I was just astonished at the Do volume you know I think Lisa's USP is just watching how she you know works with her audience she's just one of us she makes it possible. All of us yeah. in her world go, well, if Lisa can, then I can. And that's what she will always say is, look, if, guys, if I can do this as a mum of two twins, then it's possible. And I think, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are incredibly successful, a lot of women, actually, that are incredibly successful, but they're unattainable. They don't have access. You can't access them. Yes. Lisa's yeah. very accessible. And I and I think that is what is creating the success is she's just one of us. She doesn't, doesn't fit into that... Um, I, <laughs> I apologise to everybody. It just uh, it just makes me chuckle from the Instagram world of tits, teeth, and tan. So, <laughs> and she's just filters. And, <laughs> oh, bloody filters! Yeah, and it's just that you know I'm I'm only jo- I'm only joking. But Lisa's just really she's fab. She's ground. She's grounded. She's down to earth, and she says it how it is. So here we are. We're we're talking all about Lisa and flogging her services to the world. <laughs> But she's brilliant. I mean, she's recommended the book that um, I'm reading at the moment, which is Get Rich, L- Lucky Bitch, Release Denise Your Duffield Money Blocks Thomas, and Live a... F- yeah. yeah, Denise Stuffield thomas Another and amazing woman. Yeah, really, really interesting. So it's about surrounding yourself, isn't it, with people that you can feel inspired by and there's always I mean my bookshelf is full of books I read a prolific reader I I love listening to stuff I like going to stuff I like doing stuff stuff I like doing personal development I like in like developing my mind but equally so do you know what I spend it is good to actually stop doing and spend time being because actually if you just spend time with your own mind and you just got quiet music on and you can just journal that's equally as good I've only just been new to that in the last year actually and it is transformational just getting your thoughts down i mean i've, I've got a, a notebook um which my office manager and for the benefit of the viewers that can't see because you can't because it's a podcast my <laughs> i'm showing emma my book which says um 
my brain has too many tabs open. <laughs> yeah, my, mine is my uh, my Mac has way, way, way too many tabs open. <laughs> I don't have a Mac. My son tells me I ought to have one, but I don't need to learn anything new at the moment. But but anyway, I mean, this is the Harnessing Happiness podcast. So what makes you a happy person, Emma? Do you know what makes me happy? I didn't know what made me happy for a very, very, very long time. I, I, um, I grew up in a very uh, high achieving family and it was always very high achieving for everybody else. And I kind of got into that as the girl, the only girl in the family was like, oh, well, if, if you can, I can. You know, I always had that mentality. Well, if my brothers are doing it, I'm going to do it too. Um, and just achieve, achieve, achieve. And then I was always striving, always, always striving and not really thriving. Mm-hmm. So it was last year, really, when I, um, I know everybody, it's the buzzword and, you know, everybody talks about burnout, but I just hit the wall. I don't know if it was burnout. I don't know what it was, exhaustion, but I just thought I cannot have another year like this. And so this whole year has, you know, all balancing the achievement and actually it's bringing fulfillment up. Mm -hmm. And the bit for me that made me happy was just understanding me, understanding what made me, you know, real, feel joy. You know, Mm. what do I like to do? What are my values? And it was just, the thing that made me happy was just starting to understand me and not having to conform or and I think it wasn't necessarily conforming it was rebelling almost against this stereotype and fighting and battling against this whole perception of what a woman should be or or as a mother should be or a single mother should be and you know almost sort of standing up against this identity and I still get massive joy out of helping other people change their lives but I think for me it was then saying well what's important to me and actually realized that the money wasn't important it was actually the impact I was having on people around me so I'm Mm -hmm. doing much more of that now and less of the hustle bloody hate the hustle so oh, sick of the hustle god the hustle yes. can just go hustle off <laughs> absolutely absolutely and i'm so with you i mean I, I, you know my journey in itself i mean my life looks nothing like it did when i left my ex-husband in 2005 i've created a whole new life for myself and it's evolved it's kept on evolving but i felt like a sponge when i left and i because i'd so i think suppressed so much of myself i'd used all my energy to get to standing point in that relationship Uh, which I had for 20 years and had my son Um, but when I went on this journey and it was like it was me coming out of myself and suddenly becoming alive becoming myself and actually it wasn't that I was actually suddenly learning oh this is what I want to do it was it was already there because it actually it's always been always there and we are it's like the acorn is always the oak tree we are who we've always been but it's allowing it yeah it's great isn't it I I love that I love that (laughs) yeah it's fabulous that was that was channeled in um it's allowing yourself to breathe it's allowing yourself to be who you are and it's the thing that I started to discover that well there were names for things that I'd already felt I knew and I understood and I've embraced you know sort of all my crinkles my wrinkles and my kinks and my this and my that and the other and I am who I am I don't apologize for who I am you know because there's a lot of people oh, you know you might be too much at but that's more that I am you know I, I know I can be loud I can be sort of out, out there but you know it, it, you know, I, I adjust myself accordingly but it's being your authentic true self and allowing that to be as long as it doesn't impact or hurt anybody else in a sort of a, a, a a concerted detrimental way i.e you're doing it on purpose to hurt them but you are if you are just being yourself yeah. the people that don't like that will fall away and the ones that do like it and then you will naturally attract the right people to you i mean i i feel completely blessed because i have such an amazing network of people who are so warm-hearted and supportive and encouraged but you attract who you are don't you yes I guess yeah I mean and I I just love support like you do I love supporting people to be the best person they can be in fact that's my profile I had a Roger Hamilton profile done of me several years ago and I am a star supporter so I support people to be the best person that they can be and I've had to utilize that on myself because being self-employed there's nobody else behind you (laughs) it's not some ends with you (laughs) indeed indeed so so you know how have you used your positive mindset then over the you know during your life to overcome challenging situations I think I've just always innately genetically had a can-do attitude um Mm. I don't know what I'm still working out where it came from but I think from the womb I came out with a don't tell me I can't watch me I can I've just it's always been in me and when people say they can't I'm like I don't understand of course you can you just gotta (laughs) 
and even so now like my, <laughs> my core value is like we say how not no you know mm. and uh, there is always a way and a possibility you might just not be able to see it and so what I really just absolutely adore is giving people clarity of mm. the different ways that they can achieve it and then you know it's up to them to be brave to go and do it or or just see the opportunities and I just love that love 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 and that's why I'm just so passionate about you know helping with more women just achieve that freedom that they really want not just mm -hmm. on time but financially so that they can go and they can create impact and they can go and change lives and you know it's the perpetual gift that gives giving where did my positive mind come from I guess it initially is the can-do attitude and then I guess the rest of it is you know understanding my purpose understanding what makes me really happy understanding you know what my goals are but I think you know just living true to my values if something isn't in alignment with my values I leave I walk away mm -hmm. and I carry on just shedding the things that aren't in line with my values with no judgment we're all very different but if it doesn't sit for me I don't I don't absorb it I don't take it in and I stand true in those values and I think that's what it really comes down to for me yeah, no, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with you. And, and I think, you know, we're obviously very much alike on that front. I mean, I've always, you know, why can't I? I want to do it. If I can do it, I will do it. I'll make it happen. Oh, I, don't, I want to set a podcast up. Right, let's just do it. <laughs> and people will come to me. I don't know. Do they come to you and they go, uh, I've got this problem, uh, but there's only you that I think will be able to find an answer for me. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. So you're always that sort of person that people come to. And it's lovely, but yeah, yes. it's... Um, yeah. Well, it's helping people to facilitate that themselves and that's the beauty of coaching is that you know it, it it's and they, everybody's got the answers from within them but it's actually asking the right questions and as you said it's that solution focused approach solution solution focused outcome thinking okay well how can you look at this in a different way how can you change your perspective on it okay this is the situation this is where i've coined and trademarked my eight mindset is that that it's that's the the acceptance of what is you know we can talk about COVID. <laughs> Nobody could change that. So how can we shift our perspective so we can view what opportunities it's presenting rather than what it's taking away and then how we channel our energy accordingly. So that's that ape, A-P-E, you know, and it's, and it's so true and it's so simple and it, it, it makes such a difference. And it usually is the smallest things that have the biggest impact. So they it's say taking small that hinges swing big doors. That's what they say. Oh, I like that. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. No, and uh, yeah, and that's that is that is the way forward. And it is it's great helping other people see that. And as you say, we can support more people, more women do that. And just open and, and leave a growth a mindset, isn't it? Instead of, you know, that sort of really fixed. Yes, piece. absolutely. Well, it's the, the powers within. And, you know, I think the trouble is this, there's a lot of history that's been brought on and sort of generationally and linearly. And if we sort of talk about the, if we went sort of, sort of spiritually, I mean, I believe that we come in, we, we choose the lifetime we come into to have the experiences that we want in this lifetime. And so therefore... You know, you've already got that sort of spiritual history, you know, of what you've already learned and what you're bringing in. And this is what you wanted to uh, to, to achieve Maybe this time around. Maybe I was a suffragette in my previous <laughs> I think I, I, I've certainly been hugging a few past lives, I can tell you that. <laughs> we won't go down that route. <laughs> so what top tips have you got for the listeners to sort of harness happiness in their life then, Emma? Oh, gosh, there's so much that we could do. I guess the top three things would be, for me, I, I, it goes back to just really really get to know yourself know your mm -hmm. values and listen to yourself you know if you feel a bit rubbish you know tune into that and think well why am I not feeling good what is it that I'm doing is it I'm doing something for someone else just because I'm people pleasing or is this is this suiting me um you know there's ways that you can tune in and listen to yourself and if you feel that resentment or resistance to something it's it's something you need to listen to um because that resentment can create really negative emotions that we don't want to have I guess the second is you know just really try and stand in your power because when you can stand in your power and become powerful and when I say powerful it's not the controlling you know real sort of masculine energy of power it's a real um grounding centered power of you know this is unapologetic you use the word unapologetically me mm -hmm. then suddenly all of the things around you start to shift and move in alignment with that where you stand and you know having those boundaries of and it doesn't have to be I read something the other day and it said it doesn't have to be an electric fence your boundaries <laughs> it's <No>. just <laughs> knowing your limits and what you like and you don't like and, and they're always movable and always could be always movable <laughs> always movable 
So, I, and I think it's that. And then I, I also, um, I just think it is being able to just take small steps towards goals. You don't have to have massive goals of, you know, um, I want to go and earn, you know, uh, a £500,000 business. It can just be, you know, this month I'm just going to get one more client or I'm just going to put for that new client, I'm going to just test my prices on this. And then mm. you start to get a bit more courage and then it works and then you get a bit more courage. And it is, it's a slow sustain, and that's the word, sustainable. The one thing I just want to say um, is that I, I, anyone that promises a quick fix a get rich or anything, do not, it's, it doesn't work. It's hard work, it's self-belief, and it's the courage. Mm. So I do think sustainable business growth comes from probably those three elements. You know, you've got to have the strategy, you've got to have the mindset, and you've got mm. to be able to implement it adopting those principles and those values and those, that, that sentiment in your life generally enables you to live the life that you want to live however it is you know whatever it is that you do you might be in a, in a luxurious position that you don't necessarily need to work or want to work but you know you can use that time and that it, it, it more it, I'm trying to struggle with this word philanthropic philanthropic is that philanthropic a... that's the one you know it begins with a ph doesn't it or something <laughs> yeah i've got certain words i'm not dyslexic but i've got certain words it's like dynamism i can't do da- dynamism I can't very do well. iron and ironing board you mean you're in a hotel can I, no, 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 no. you can't do it <laughs> And I always put too many L's in a broccoli. Broccoli. <laughs> I don't know if that came from my daughter. My daughter was young. Anyway, yeah, no. I think we've all got these speech effects somewhere, don't we? <laughs> but do you know what? It's actually embracing our inner child, isn't it? And life's about having some fun as well. I mean, and it is about laughter. I mean, it is. I just, you know, la- I love larking about. You know, I can be really serious about business, but I just want this is a whole I think podcast. You have fun. Yeah. Be playful with it. Yeah. Yeah. So right. That's a really absolutely, good tip. Absolutely. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, it's, I mean, it's about what feels right for you. And yeah, and you can radiate that out and then that comes back in. And but what you know, is in the, the meantime, worst that can happen? Oh, yes. I love that one. I love what that one. What is the worst <laughs> that can happen? I use that regularly, Emma. I do. I believe that everything's working out wonderfully. You know, whatever whatever's presented itself in whatever format and if things don't happen for a reason there is a reason behind it you know and it's like well how can I use that time better or what can I learn from that how can I do it differently next time because let's face it if you keep on repeating getting the same mistake it's nothing's going to change it's all about looking and yeah reflecting and making those changes to bring about different results that's so true one of the strategies that I always use actually when I have a really rough day or rough time or something's just not quite in alignment I always go back to the most traumatic period of life which was when I had my daughter premature her dad when Mm -hmm. I had to go back to work you know I just don't know how I got through those days so now I just go listen girl if you can go (laughs) through what you went through and you are now where you are you can do anything so I think you know I would just say go back to a time when you really struggled and you thought that there was no end to this and look back and think I got through it I'm going to get through this that that to me is one of my biggest strategies of like where was I incredibly resilient and I'm going to pull that and harness that. That's made me tingle from top to bottom because that is so true. Oh my gosh, that is a really really such an important message and it's been really sort of you can't see nobody can see but Aww. I've got goosebumps all the way down my body, all the way down my legs and my arms because that is powerful. You know, as you said, if you can if you anchor that, you reflect back onto that and I I think that you know when I go back and think well crikey. You know, 2009, heart of the recession, self-employed, you know, single mum, got a bank loan. I had to go and have sort of a business advice to know and understand how to put down a business proposal because I've not done a degree. I've not done anything fancy, you know, anything along those lines. But, you know, I made it happen because it's, it's setting that intention. However, we could carry on talking for so much longer because it's been that. absolutely amazing. So how do... Um, how do people get in touch with you, Emma? Yeah, there's different ways. So you can either follow me on Instagram at, at Million Pound Mentor. You can come to my website, which is www.emmaclayton.com. And if any of this has resonated, I hope it's okay to say, but I've got a free webinar. This is stuff that I would normally charge clients thousands mm. to do, but I am on such a mission for women to stand tall with their pricing that I've got a free how to price and position yourself in the market for power and it's a free mm. webinar and it's open to anybody and everybody as long as you're got your own business self-employed doesn't matter I want this for every single woman and it has made lots of money for lots of people who have come out of it and gone oh my god that was so so incredible 
because it's proper tips so awesome if it's okay for yes go ahead please do yeah go you know go to my website it's one of the first things that you'll see go into the masterclass and hopefully you know 45 minutes you'll get some really really good tips and strategies um fabulous so is that readily available at all time then is it it's a pre-recorded webinar pre-recorded i actually did do it as a masterclass and forgot Mm. to record it so then i re-recorded it and i put it on my website so awesome um, yeah yeah, always press record. So, um, yes. so that's available. And, I, and I've done that because I really, I'm very true to this mission. I want more women, you know, to use as we go into 2022, you know, to really, you know, put the prices up, change, change your price, change the world. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, Emma, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been absolutely awesome. Amazing. I could carry on talking to you all day. And it's a shame we're not local because then we could have a coffee and go for lunch oh. as well. Or <laughs> something stronger. Yeah, or something stronger, yes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're very, very, very welcome. Well, thank you again so much. And uh, this has been Sarah J. Naylor at Harnessing Happiness. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed my uh, conversation with the delightful Emma Clayton. And if you have, please do rate, review, follow, subscribe, whatever it is, because we can harness happiness and spread that happiness globally. We can empower the world that way. So thank you again so much. Take care until next time. Thanks for listening to the Harnessing Happiness podcast with Sarah J. Naylor. If you took value from the content, please follow the show on your podcast app. And to find out more about Sarah's ape mindset, visit sarahjnaylor.com. That's Sarah 